Ah, <sighs> well, what a turn of events, what a flipping day. I tried to go live for the Q3 delivery report. That didn't happen because StreamYard decided not to let me do live. I don't know, I'm pretty frustrated because of that. That thing pissed me off. The delivery numbers, not so much, but this really ruined my day because I know a lot of you guys were waiting for me to go live. I was excited to go live. I was full of energy and that really deflated me. I had to think about what I'm going to do next with this live stuff. Maybe I have to change to something else, maybe restream or something, but let's see. Options are there. Let's get down to the video today. We're going to talk about Tesla's Q3 delivery report because, well, I thought it was going to be around 480,000. Estimates were saying 463,000, which they bumped it up right before the actual Q3 delivery report. It was actually 460,000. So in essence, it is a beat because we did get almost 463,000 in deliveries and almost 470,000 in production, which is, you know, not bad. It's not the end of the world. I, I know the stock is down like four or five percent because they missed they they missed it by one thousand vehicles. It's not that big of a deal. But again, a lot of people had a lot of high expectations for this delivery Q three delivery. Me, for example, I mean four hundred eighty thousand. <laughs> now I look like an idiot, right? But nonetheless, it just goes to show you that hey, you can't always be right. Sometimes I'm spot on. Sometimes. I'm off by like 20,000 or 19,000 vehicles, whatever. It doesn't matter. As James Stevenson always says, your predictions are always going to be wrong. It's just who's going to be the closest. That's it. So let's talk about it. Let's see how this is going to affect Q3 earnings and maybe Q4 as well. So smash that like button because there's some juicy stuff we could talk about here as well. So first things first, let's go read what they said. In the third quarter, we produced approximately 470,000 vehicles, delivered approximately 463,000 vehicles and deployed 6.9, which is hilarious, gigawatts per hour of energy storage products. Now, Personally, I know this is lumpy, but these guys are at like full capacity with energy units, right? Now we may see in Q4, they may go over 10 gigawatts per hour. Let's see, we don't know. It is lumpy, but 6.9 gigawatts per hour, although down from previous quarter, still on a upward trajectory, which is what we need. Moving on to the production deliveries and subject to operating lease account, that's only like 3% in total, so that's not that much of a big deal. We have Model 3 and Y deliveries of 440,000, production of almost 444,000, other models, which includes SNX and the Cybertruck, and because I couldn't go live on this channel, I went live with Futuraza or Brian on his channel, and we discussed this, and we said that for deliveries, half of that will be SNX, maybe a little bit more, but the rest of it has to be the Cybertruck. Must be the Cybertruck right overall here are the numbers that we got 462,000 or 463,000 which is not bad guys you know for for an environment where car sales are not high that's not bad for tesla right and don't forget europe has not decreased any interest rates they have not bring down interest rates it's only the u.s and canada and that's it so far and sweden they brought down interest rates as well but every, everyone else has not brought it down Soon they will, and once they do, we will see the reflection of the deliveries very soon as well. But until then, until interest rates are high, people are not really looking forward to getting in a car or anything like that. Then Tesla says they'll post the Q3 earnings on October 23rd, 2024. I'm going to try my best to be live for that one. I am going to be live for that one. I just don't want to have this stupid issue again. And as well as the 1010. That's all we see. That, that's... I have to... That needs to be... I have to be live for that. I, I'll find a way to do it one way or the other. Got to learn other ways than just stream it because that really pissed me off. As you see, I'm really upset because of that, not because of these numbers. Let's put this number into the Q3 earnings to see what this means. Now, obviously, Wall Street is gonna take this number and put it to their spreadsheet and give it an estimate of what Q3 EPS should be, right? We first we said 56 cents, but I don't think that's gonna be the case anymore. I think it's gonna be maybe low 50s, high 40s, it's gonna be around there. So let's get down to that. Let's get to that spreadsheet, which is also available on Patreon, which is available in the car in the corner here if you all want to support me there as well. So here is a chart. The only thing I brought down was the vehicle gross profits because we're not getting 480,000. So vehicle gross profits going to go lower instead of having it around 14.5. I brought it down to 14.2. I mean, this could actually go lower. I mean, I have here average selling price of 41.9 actually increasing from Q2. The question is, is it going to increase from Q2? I don't know. Could be the same, could actually be even less. So I, I mean, I think this could be less, but I am a little bit of an optimist. And if that's higher, then that means vehicle gross profits would be higher. If that's the same as Q2, well, then vehicle gross profits going to be lower, probably closer to 
maybe 14 percent but let's just continue with these numbers and you know i will have to do more in depth get more into the numbers because now there's clarity of what the numbers are going to be then i'll get the final estimate out for that because i'm more closer on these things than i am with actual deliveries because deliveries it's a hit and miss sometimes, but here there's more clarity. We have total energy revenue because it is 6.9 doing the calculations that comes down to about 2.2 billion in revenue profits of over half a billion if, if it's 24% still, which I don't see any reason why it wouldn't be around 24%. Nothing really has changed. They're ramping more economy of scale. So unless they've brought down the prices that, that we don't know yet. But until then, that's what I think energy is. Operating costs, I brought it down by 100 million to 2.8 billion. I brought it down too because now they're making less money, of course. So they're going to be, going to pay, be paying less taxes this quarter as well. And of course, shares of standing is continuing to be diluted. So let's go ahead and put the number in. 462,890 vehicle delivered. And bam, look at all these numbers coming. I flip and love it. So first, so you guys can see, total gap gross margin is lower, not only compared to Q2, but to Q1 as well. And again, this is not a good sign because this means that the margins of the business is actually going down. So that's not good. Wall Street is not going to like this number. Then we got the operating margin of 5.5%, the same as Q1. Now, again, this is with an increase of the average selling price of only $200. Do you think that? I mean, again, I don't think so. I mean, if you keep it the same thing, it's going to be even less. And that means the vehicle gross profit is going to be less as well. So 5.4%. I mean, I don't know, man. I don't know. It's not, it's not looking to be a good Q3. Again, I said that this is going to be a turning point. But looking at how the deliveries came out, the 20,000 would make a big difference. Having 480,000 vehicles delivered would have made a bigger difference. But I don't know, 463,000. And the energy part, I thought it's going to be 10 gigawatts, 6.9. So that would have been the one of the biggest contributions to the quarter being turned around. But I guess we got to wait for Q4, maybe even Q1 for that. So not just yet, not just yet. The total revenue in Q3 is 25.4 billion, which is less than Q2s, which that's interesting. Income from operations, 1.4 billion, less than Q2s as well. We have net income gap of 1.35 billion, less than Q2s as well, which is insane. And non-gap as well, 1.75 compared to 1.8, less than Q2s. That comes down to an EPS of 50 cents. Now, I don't know what Wall Street is going to say. We don't know that yet. We'll give it, like, we'll give them like a couple days, few days for them to put it in, in the numbers to come up with a, you know, with a good EPS, with their prediction of the EPS, then we can compare it to that. But this is not my final. I'm just putting it right now because the news is fresh. I have to like sit down and actually think about it. I'm like, you know, they sold more cars. So they should be able, revenue should be more, but then energy was less. So I got to you know, sit down and do all the math and stuff before I can get my final out. But as of now, I don't know, man, it's not looking the, it's not looking like the quarter that we all thought is going to turn around, right? All eyes are on 10, 10. So maybe the stock may rise because of that, but I do expect it's going to be sell the news event. Now, what could the stock price be? after the earnings come out and the earnings are like this. Well, to be honest, it's not looking like this year, Tesla's going to be beating 2023 deliveries. And it's crazy because even Wall Street consensus are saying that too. They're saying about like in the high 1.7 million. So they're gonna be less than last year. Now again, in the grand scheme of things, none of this matters. It absolutely doesn't matter. But in the short term, it does. It does matter in the short term. But again, if you're a long-term investor, none of this will matter. But in the short term, it does really matter. And that would mean for them to beat 1.08 million vehicle deliveries of 2023, the total deliveries in 2023, they would need to have 515,000 vehicle deliveries in Q4. Do you think that will happen? I don't know. 500,000 vehicle deliveries make sense based on these numbers. And I know Q4 is a very strong quarter, but I don't know. I'm going to keep my guard up a little bit on this one. I'm not going to be jumping the gun anymore. So the stock price that I think that could happen in Q3 could be in the 65 to 70s in between 221 or 238 bucks per share, somewhere around there. Seeing it go higher than this, and again, um, this is October 21st or October 23rd to January 20th after the Q3 earnings are out, after the robot taxi has been set, everything, everything. So I think around these stock prices makes sense. Now going to Q4 with 500,000 vehicles delivered and at 10 gigawatt per hour, energy storage, right? This I'm thinking Q4 is going to be 10, but it could be even 13 or 14 because they did 6.9 on their full capacity. So I think this could be made up in Q4, maybe even in Q1, depending. Again, it's lumpy. It's hard to predict this thing, but I'm saying full capacity. 
we could get over 28 billion in revenue but the operating margin is still in the five percent of 5.6 percent earnings are more yes definitely no doubt about that if they do 500,000 vehicles in sales but look at the last four quarters 100 billion and then we've got the earnings of just over 5 billion now again, I think there's in Q4 there's going to be a tax inher inheritance slapped onto it, just like how they did in Q3, Q4 of 2023. But nonetheless, around that time, man, that would mean if if there is no tax inheritance loss or anything like that, that would mean to keep the stock price today the way it is, like around the 230s to that, that would that would need a PE of 150, around the 229s, which is insane. Now my stock price target for this comp for this year is 350. That would mean a PE of 229. So whatever the stock price was in the realistic case of around 150, and I don't even know if that's really. Anyways, I think there's going to be tax inher inherited loss that's not going to show the PE that high, even though the PE don't, doesn't really matter for a company like Tesla because there's just so many things that is just not priced in for it. But nonetheless, my price target of 350 is looking a whole lot less likely, but I'm sticking by it. I ain't changing it. I'm not because. There could be a surprise. Interest rates could, could go, go down even more because we saw what happened once interest rates went down just last month. Tesla stock shot up like crazy. Same thing will happen again in Q4 and other times when interest rates gradually go down if we avoid a recession. But nonetheless, it looks like 2024 could be the year. Revenue is doing good compared to revenue. Fine. But in terms of earnings, probably it's going to be the last year that we're... It's going to be the year that we know it, it, it was a bad year for Tesla 2024. I think 2025 is going to be a much better year 2026 and so on and so forth is going to be a much better year. I wish the energy was a bit better then we could have had a better Q3 a higher a, a, definitely a higher stock price and stuff. Yeah man this is a Q3 deliveries and although we all hoped that the deliveries were in the 470s that would have helped a lot and not in the 460s low 460s Hey, it's not the end of the world. We are all we are all long-term investors, and it doesn't matter. What we should be lying right now is a 1010. That is some that's gonna be revolutionary. And once that product is out, and once we see the software margins come in, FSDs coming in, these vehicle stuff doesn't even flip the matter, man. It doesn't. And here are some clues in 1010 based on what Tesla is inviting, the invitation, which is absolutely interesting. So check it out. You all will be disappointed. Subscribe, guys. Get your about the dip t-shirt. Because in 10 years, 5 years time, we're going to look back in today's stock price and say, Ah, I held, and not only that I held, I bought the dip. See you guys in the next video. See ya.